welcome to another video. Today it is part two of the McCall's 7892 Sew Along. So today we're going to be making the ruffle, we're going to be making the ties, and we're going to be making the skirt, and we're getting, going to be getting all of those sewn. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is the tie ends. This is just because it's one of those things that I like to get done, get it out of the way, have it finished so that when I come to put the dress together it's there and it's ready for me. So the first thing that we want to do is with right sides together fold tie end along fold line, stitch leaving end with symbols open and trim. So we're going to fold it right, right sides together and sew along that diagonal end and then all the way along the straight end leaving the short end open. I've sewn my tie right sides together along the diagonal edge, pivoting at this point here, and then I've sewn all the way up to the other short edge, and I've left this one open. So the next thing that we need to do is trim close to our two points here, or our corner and our point, and then we're going to trim the excess seam allowance in half. So trim nice and close to your corner and to your point and your corner, and then trim the rest of the excess seam allowance in half. I've trimmed nice and close to my point and my corner and then the rest of the seam allowance has been trimmed in half. So now we can turn this through. Okay, so this is actually quite a wide tie so I don't think I'm going to need to do anything too special to, to turn it through other than just literally reach inside and pull it back on itself. Some of the smaller ties that I do, like for the Eve dress for example, I use a safety pin but I don't think, in fact I'm definitely not looking at this, going to need a safety pin to turn this through. So I'm just going to turn this through the entire way. And if you remember when we were cutting out, I've made my ties quite a bit longer than the pattern calls for because I prefer my wrap dresses to tie with the ties rather than the hooks and eyes and then have a decorative tie. That's not something that I enjoy. So I have made these about 20 inches longer than the pattern calls for. So once it's turned all the way through, we're then going to go and press this so we have a nice crisp edge or two crisp edges along the seam line and the fold line. You may need to use a point turner of some description or another or point, a pointy pointy thing. I'm going to use my purple thang just to get my ends and my corner nicely turned out. But for now just kind of pulling through and giving it a little bit of a, a roll will work. On that for now. So there's tie number one, I say it needs a press and I'm going to work on tie number two. I'm jumping around again, the next thing that I want to do is the flounce. So we need to stitch the black flounce together at the back edge and that's the one with the three notches on it and as I mentioned when I was cutting this out I have cut, I have doubled my flounces because I wanted it to be self-lined so I'm going to have four of these so two sets to sew together at the back and then we're going to sew them to the two front flounces at each side. These flounces can look very very similar when you get them off of the tissue or the paper pattern. So what I like to do is I, cu I colour code my pins. I've marked the side seams with my yellow pins so I know that this is the seam that's going to be attaching or this is the side that's going to be attaching to the side seam of the back flounce. This is my front flounce. So I'm going to take this paper pattern off and I'm going to do the same with my back flounce. I'm going to mark the very back with my orange pins and then I'm going to mark the side seams with yellow pins and that will just help me get everything together. There are notches in this pattern piece but I don't want to have to go searching for the notches on each piece to make sure that I'm putting the right things together so I just like to colour code with pins. Now that I've sewn all of my flounces together I'm going to take them to the ironing board and press these open. Okay, so if you're following along with me, you will have two sets of flounces. So I pin them right sides together, matching up the short front edge and then the longer lower edge. I'm going to sew the front edge at 5 eighths of an inch and then I'm going to pivot at this corner and sew this bottom curve 
at the bottom of the flounce at a quarter of an inch. That's because I'm trying to preserve as much length as possible because I have a feeling this, this skirt's going to be a little short for me. So five eighths of an inch on the short front edges, pivot and a quarter of an inch all the way along the bottom and that is a lot of sewing and it's been a lot of pinning. I have sewn the whole bottom of my ruffle, that took a while. So I'm going to need to trim my corners so that I can get a nice pointy point and I'm going to turn this through and press it. I have pressed the edge of my flounce all the way around and I'm now going to stitch the upper edge together. So the pattern does want you to stay stitch the inner edge so you can attach it to your skirt pieces later on. I'm going to be basting the two together and stay stitching at the same time. I'm going to do it at 3 eighths of an inch because again I'm trying to preserve as much length in this skirt as possible so I'm going to sew all the way around and I am, as I say, I am basting them together but I'm going to use a regular stitch length of 2.5 because I don't need to remove this stitching later on. We have our flounce, we have our ties. I'm going to set those aside for a while and I'm going to work on the skirt. So the first thing that it would like us to do is stitch skirt back sections together at centre back. So I'm going to do that with a French seam. I'm going to do the same for the side seams. So I'm going to sew them all in one go. I'm going to sew them wrong sides together at a quarter of an inch for all three seams first. I've sewn my seam together at a quarter of an inch and now I am trimming that down to one eighth of an inch and I'm going to do that for the centre back seam and the side seams. And I sewed the seams together with the wrong sides of the fabric together. I have pressed my seams so that the right sides are together and then I finished the French seam at 3 eighths of an inch which has enclosed the raw edges. So I'm going to go and press the side seams towards the back and the centre seam towards centre back seam towards the left. Then we can stay stitch the waistband of the skirt like it asks us to do in step 41. Now before I sew on my flounce I want to finish the raw front edge of my skirt and the way that the pattern would like you to do it is to make a narrow hem at the both of the front edges and I'm going to actually do that. I have drawn on a line here that is one and a quarter inches away from the raw edge and if I fold my raw edge over to meet that that will be mean that I have created a crease of five eighths of an inch which is the seam allowance. So I'm going to press it over to this line and then I'm going to press that edge under again so that I can top stitch it down and I'm going to do that for both sides. So I have pressed my seam allowance and then I've pressed it under again and I'm now going to top stitch down that edge to keep this in place and I'm going to do that for both sides. My front edge is finished and all top stitched down so I am now going to run a line of stay stitching around the upper edge of the skirt at half an inch away from the raw edge so it's just inside the seam allowance. Okay so the next step is 45 pin flounce to lower edge of skirt clipping flounce where necessary baste stitch stitch again quarter of an inch six millimeters away in seam allowance trim close to stitching press seam towards skirt. I'm going to do about half of that probably actually only about quarter of that. <laughs> so I have attached my flounce to my skirt with the right sides together. Not that the, my flounce has a right side but if you haven't double doubled up your flounce you want the right side of the flounce to the right side of the skirt. I am going to stitch at a quarter of an inch because again I am trying to preserve as much length as possible all the way around and I'm going to follow the line of basting stitches that I did on my flounce and I want to sew with the flounce up because the flounce has more volume than the skirt so I want to make sure that I'm not getting any puckers or tucks when I'm sewing it. So I'm going to sew that the whole way around at a quarter of an inch. I have sewn my flounce to my skirt, now I need to finish off this edge and I'm going to do that with bias binding. I'm sewing the right side of my binding to the wrong side of the skirt and I've got the skirt side up so I am being very careful and feeling as I'm going to make sure that my flounce is not getting caught as I'm sewing the binding on and I'm keeping the raw edge of the binding against the raw edge of the skirt there and I am sewing in the ditch along here the whole way around. When I started I actually so I've wrapped a little bit of the binding around to the right side of the skirt and that when we come to finish it will help us give it give us a really nice clean edge. Okay so I'm finishing off my binding well I'm doing step number two in the binding, there is another step after this. So I have all of the fabric and the, I sorry, the flounce and the skirt over to the right and I have wrapped the binding around the raw edge and I'm using my right finger to push the fabric flat and my left finger to push the binding flat. And you need to be really, really careful that you are making sure that everything underneath is lying flat and that you're not catching any of your skirt 
when you're sewing this so you're going to need to readjust quite a lot make sure that everything is nice and flat whilst you sew this bit on and just double check because you don't want to sew a great big long seam and then find that you've caught half the skirt in your seam and have to unpick it all so far I've only caught the skirt twice so I've just stopped unpicked a little bit and then started sewing again with everything nice and flat so we're going to do that from edge to edge finishing off all the binding then we're going to press the binding towards the skirt and top stitch this edge down i've pressed the bias binding and seam allowance towards the skirt and i'm now top stitching it down from the wrong side with my blind hem foot in the same manner that i always do and what i'm making sure to do is really kind of put some not tension but make sure that the actual upper skirt side is nice and flat because I don't want there to be any puckers or wrinkles when I'm stitching this so I'm going to do that the whole way around and then the skirt is done for now and we can put it to the side I have finished sewing the top stitching and this is what it looks like from the right side and as you can see because I was making sure that the fabric was nice and taut underneath the presser foot it's I don't have any wrinkles in my stitching here and this is what the front edge looks like and the reason that I don't mind the top stitching being visible is because there's top stitching on the front edge of the skirt as well so everything is nicely enclosed on the binding side so this is the skirt finished for now so I'm going to move on to the bodice if you have any questions at all please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you I hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon bye